Hi everyone, welcome to the third of my solo sessions and for today's video the British composer John Ashton Thomas has very kindly written me a beautiful piece of music. Um, John and I first worked together a few years ago when he arranged the music for um, a recording that I did on a Hans Zimmer album and we recorded The Lion King which was lovely and we've worked on um, uh, a piece of music very recently for saxophone and choir which was gorgeous. Um, so the piece that he's written for me, um, he wrote it two weeks ago, <laughs> and it's called If You'd Seen This. Hello, John. <laughs> Hi, Amy. Hi. How are you doing? <laughs> I'm good. I'm, I'm, doing, I'm doing fine, yeah. As, as, we're, as we all are, we're dealing with this change of circumstances. Yeah. Yes, indeed. Slight change. <laughs> and you're, you usually live in London, but where are you at the moment? I'm down, I'm in Devon, um, we've, got, we've got this house down here where we all lived, um, me and my family, for several years while the kids were growing up and we, we still got it and so just before the lockdown it was going to be my kids' birthdays are both on the 24th of March even though they're not twins mm. and my birthday was on the 28th, the Mother's Day was a few days before that, we just thought well, we'll, we'll come down here and do all that and, and that was it. We never, we you, never went, never went, back. went back to London. Yeah. yeah. Well, lucky you. <laughs> I think I might come and join you if I'm allowed. <laughs> and, and just before, um, well, first of all, we, we worked together in February um, and you wrote a beautiful piece, um, A Lullaby for Soprano Saxophone and Choir. And then um, after that, just before the lockdown started, you were supposed to be going on to, to America. Is that right? Yeah, yeah, I was. I was going to be, I occasionally um, go on tour conducting with Michael Bublé and um, we were going to be doing three and a half weeks from sort of late, yeah, late, mid-March, mid-March to early April. And um, it got cancelled about three or four days before we were going to leave, which was really a huge relief because um, <laughs> even though nothing had really kicked off, I don't think you needed much of an imagination to imagine what what the outcome of the whole thing might be and when I say it was a relief it was a relief because you know I didn't want to be um stuck away from home with yeah. possibly no means of getting back mm -hmm. during a period like this so um yeah I was going to be doing that and then like all other musicians I as soon as that tour got cancelled I phoned up some i had been booked to do a load of studio sessions which um came during that period and I said I can't do them as soon as that tour got cancelled I was on the phone I said oh, I can do them now and they all came back and then they all got cancelled <laughs> and um, of course there's no studio there's nothing going on I do a lot of work in um, film orchestrating and that kind of thing and yeah that's all that's all on hold at the moment but um, we, we shall see how it how it all comes out I, I am working on a, an album at the moment which i think we're going to try to record with everybody at home but you know wow. whether or not that will work but it's not yeah. for a huge number of people so we shall see okay. oh good luck <laughs> and how has the lockdown affected the way that you work it's um well for the first few weeks for the first th at least three weeks i really was unable to do anything really of anything very much I, I did a few little pieces of work and um i started your piece during that period but i it was very odd because normally i work a lot and i found for the first few weeks i it was very hard to do anything i, I found myself sitting down in chairs reading books and going to sleep that was the kind of thing that i found myself doing and um <laughs> But gradually, it's, um, it's sort of come back. And now I'd say I'm sort of more or less back to normal in terms of, of working and the amount of work I'm doing and the, and the, the quality. But actually, when, when we were in touch about doing this project, that was a, a real godsend for me because I, need, I think I needed something just, you know, where I was going to just create something and um, not do it for, you know, for anything for any commercial reasons but also knowing that you know well hoping that you would like it 
assuming that, <laughs> and that you would record it, you know, and it would be out there quite quickly. So that was a really good motivation to do the um, piece. And also, I mean, it's, it's interesting because I watched the video that you did with Chris Walden and he was talking about writing for a single line instrument. Yeah. And, you know, in a way, because the logistics, the practical aspect of that is, is, is very minimal. I mean, one, you're only writing one line, you know, you want to write three minutes of music, you have to think about the orchestration, blah, blah, blah. But then the, the other side of it, as Chris pointed out, is the, you know, the fact that you're essentially, whatever you do, you're going to be writing a melody line of some kind. I mean, that's, that, by definition, that's what you're going to be doing with no harmony. But what I, what I was able to do with, and as people will hear, was write some what I thought were, you know, possibly very challenging arpeggio figures, which you played beautifully and with such precision and, and all the, at all the different dynamic levels and everything. But of course, then you can get some sort of impression in parts of the piece of a, of a harmonic progression that's not just implied. You know, you can actually hear it. So any, anybody, you don't have to be a musician to actually hear a change of harmony going on in this piece in mm -hmm. some bits of it yeah yeah and tell me about the piece um just well i yeah yeah so i i i thought i mean i'm looking i've got it in front of me now so when i'm looking up in that direction, <laughs> looking at the score on another screen but the um there were really two things that i two essential ideas that i had so one was the the harmony thing that I was just talking about and then the other thing was to sometimes not really but just give the vague impression that there are two players um answering each other so there'll be a phrase that's quite in a higher register and then another one answering in a, in a lower register so just to get this vague idea that you've got two people playing so those were the two ideas that I had and I and um and I you know just constructed the piece on that um Mm -hmm. basis and then and then afterwards i so i was just thinking of you in you, you know and the soprano saxophone as i was doing it and then afterwards i thought well okay i, I need a title for this piece and so it's called if you'd seen this and i was thinking of my two closest female relatives who passed on my mum who who died 10 years ago and my sister died just under two years ago and i was imagining what they would have thought of this situation that we're in at the moment in various different ways in some ways you know how absurd it is and in some ways how frightening um and you know uh how it might have affected them etc etc so i i was thinking of of what they would have thought about the situation in various different ways you know some you know quite severe and others you know much much lighter you know why can't i get hold of x y or z in the shop or whatever it is you know, on one level and much mm. more um, frightening things on another level. Yeah, oh, that's beautiful. Well, it's a gorgeous piece. Thank you very much for writing it for me. Well, you're welcome. And I mean, the play, you, you've sent me a recording of you playing it the other day and it sounded really, really nice. It's just such a lovely performance. And there, there was, you know, I, it just, you, your playing brought so much more to it, as I think I said in it in an email the other day um than than the sound in my head does that if that makes sense yeah. and of course that's the whole point but it sound it sounded absolutely lovely um the way that you played mm -hmm. it in that recording well it's a real dream to work with you so thank you john great thanks amy <laughs> thank you Bye. thanks Bye.